Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are, and welcome to Women in Project Management, Leaders in Charge. This presentation is a panel presentation. Uh, we'll feature uh, a number of leaders in project management uh, and is part of the International Project Management Day um, on November 1st, 2012. Our agenda for today will be uh, introductions by myself, Martin Chernenkoff, a word from our sponsor, Frank Salatis, and then the introductions of each of our panel members, followed by the discussion and a wrap-up. Our sponsor for today's presentation is Frank Salatis, PMP. Many of you may know Frank Salatis from the International Institute for Learning, IIL. Frank is the uh, is a senior consultant and trainer for IIL and is the originator of International Project Management Day. Uh, he is the author of several uh, highly regarded books within the project management community. He is a uh, speaker and a trainer. And for those of you who've possibly had the opportunity to uh, see him on YouTube, Frank is the author and presenter of the Project Management Blues. And uh, now, Frank, uh, a few words from you in introducing today's uh, International Project Management Day presentation. Thank you, Martin, for moderating this very interesting and useful panel. And I'd also like to thank the panel themselves, especially Naomi, for organizing the panel, and to Deanne and Vicky for taking their time to share their, their ideas and their knowledge about project management in this idea of women in project management. The purpose of International Project Management Day is to recognize project managers for their contributions to their organizations. Everyone everywhere experiences the results of project management every day, so it's fitting to have this day of recognition. The topic of women in project management was selected as a major theme this year mainly because we want to enhance the awareness of opportunities in the field of professional project management. And we wanted to especially focus on that area for women who are considering their career options. So I'd like to extend my personal thanks again to the panel and to project managers everywhere for their continued dedication in this very fascinating and ever growing field. And with that, I'd like to turn this back over to Martin and enjoy the rest of the day. Our panel today consists of myself, Martin Chernikoff, and three uh, world-class women project managers. Between the panel, the panel represents uh, 60 years of global experience. Um, we have people from North America, uh, Europe, and, uh, and the Pacific. Uh, these are global thought leaders, speakers, and authors, whose, one of whose objective is to advance the uh, women in project management through their speaking and authoring. Let me, let me start by introducing you to Naomi Kayeti. Naomi is the chair for the Women in Project Management theme for International Project Management Day. Naomi's focus is on leadership. She is a blogger, a speaker, and a contributing author to a number of uh, websites and is very involved with PMI. Good morning and uh, good afternoon, Naomi. Thanks, Martin. It's great to be here today. Uh, next on the panel is Deanne Earle. Deanne is the author of um, Unlike Before. Unlike Before is her philosophy, her company, and her blog. Deanne's main focus is on change management. She has uh, created a model called the ATI model, uh, Alter, Transform, and Integrate. Deanne brings today a global perspective. Um, 
She uh, originates in New Zealand, as you may notice by the accent, and is currently working and living in Italy. Good afternoon, Deanne. Good morning, Martin. Nice to be here today with uh, yourself and the other panelists. I'd like to introduce you to Vicki James. She is with Professional Project Solutions. Um, Vicki is both a certified business analyst and a certified project manager. Vicki's focus is on project sponsorship, uh, in which she is co-authoring a book, uh, which will be available in uh, uh, next year. Uh, good afternoon, Vicki. Good afternoon, Martin. Thank you for the introduction, and thank you for moderating us today. And thank you. Uh, finally, um, myself, I am Martin Chernenkoff, uh, uh, PMP. I am uh, the founder of uh, PDUOTD.com, website for professional development. I am an IT uh, project management consultant uh, and a project management trainer. Uh, and I was introduced to this uh, fine panel of women in project management through social media. Uh, we're all involved in, uh, in Twitter through the hashtag PMOT and the hashtag PMChat. And we were introduced to one another through LinkedIn. Our first question for the panel, um, you're all involved in, in project management. And what we're seeing a lot of uh, discussion in the project management forums and uh, in, the, uh, in the Congress relates to project management and business strategy. How can we ensure that, the, how can PMs ensure that the, the projects remain connected to the business? It's really important in today's economy that, that we provide value. Um, I'm going to ask, ask first Vicki. You, you have both a business analyst perspective and a project management perspective on this. How do you, what do you think PMs bring and, and how can they ensure that, that the project is connected to the business? Well, there's a couple different aspects that I think are very important. Um, it begins with stakeholder management and making sure that we identify those business stakeholders that have the information we need and are willing to provide it um, throughout the project. Also includes an element of stakeholder education to let the business know that um, we will need their participation when it comes to eliciting requirements, uh, verify how the project's doing, that um, they're going to get more value from the project the more they participate in it. So there's that element of stakeholder education. And then finally, uh, utilizing the role of the business analyst. Uh, the project manager doesn't have to do it all on many of our projects. That's just uh, too much stakeholder management and too much document management and everything else to deal with. Uh, business analysts have many of the same skills that project managers do as far as interviews, uh, soft skills, uh, talking to stakeholders and that type of thing. But we also have a really large tool set of um, items that we can use to help elicit and communicate the requirements we're hearing from the business. So leveraging that skill set on the projects is going to go a huge way to helping bring that together as well. So just to sum it up, I think part of it is, is the, the stakeholder management and education, and then also using business analysis on our teams to help uh, tie that in and, and bring it to the forefront of the project. So um, a, a couple of key points I heard there was one is, is not for the project manager to, to try to do it all um, and, um, uh, and to um, do the, or have the, the business analyst. Now, BAs have, uh, have specific knowledge. Uh, my background is, is PM. Um, I know about the project management business of, or body of knowledge. Is there anything comparable in, in the BA world? Yes, there is. There is a business analysis body of knowledge that the International um, Institute of Business Analysis has put out. Uh, the, the IIBA is relatively new. It was founded in 2003, but much of the work they're doing parallels um, what PMI has done uh, just for the business analyst. So they do have a body of knowledge. They do have uh, a couple different certifications, uh, and the resources that the direction they're heading is very much comparable to PMI, just what the business analyst has a, has a profession in mind. 
Okay, that's something I'll have to take a look into. Thank you. Deanne, yes. your perspective yes. is, is change management, and an yes. awful lot of projects um, in, in today's economy um, relate to, to change management. We're changing processes. Uh, we're merging companies. Uh, there, are, there are new fields that are evolving. Uh, companies are finding that the, um, the business they were in isn't the business they need, need to be in. No. How do you think that uh, the PMs can, stay, the, can help the, the project stay connected to the business during change management? Yeah, the, um, there's a very important factor there that, and point that you just made yourself, Martin, is um, about organizations are changing and they need to shift from uh, how they are today and what they're doing today to what tomorrow's business as usual will look like. And um, it's very important for project managers to recognize and realize that projects are not theirs. They're not the project manager's project. They belong to the organization. And the reason that the project manager is there is to deliver the outcomes for the business. So it's very important to uh, remember that that's their that that is the whole purpose of why they're there. They, um, while the project itself might be an individual uh, set up for an individual purpose and uh, maybe a one-off activity for a specific contribution, it is not that individuality and one-offness is not an isolated or insulated case. So it's always there to deliver what the business needs. And I think sometimes that gets a little bit forgotten. Um, your stakeholders are very important, as Vicky was saying, because of their needs. However, the stake, again, it's what the stakeholder needs in order to deliver what the organization is looking for, for tomorrow's way of working. So all projects are about change. And it's very important for project managers to remember that uh, nothing will stay the same and they must be able to shift and morph as well uh, while they're managing the effects that that change will bring. They're not initiated, projects are not initiated for today's way of doing business to stay the same, otherwise the organisation will never transition and transform into what, to it, what it needs to look like for tomorrow. Do you find uh, in, in, in projects that you've worked with, do you find that, that, the man, that the business actually knows what it needs to do in terms of, of change management or uh, does the, the, the PM and the, and the BA bring some of that uh, domain knowledge and specific change management knowledge to the, uh, to the project? Yeah, you know, I think that there's um, a little bit of a uh, psychological hang up around change management. Change management is very important um, because people, uh, organizations are, are people, right? Without people, organizations don't exist. And people get used to, and we all, we all do, uh, ourselves as project managers and leaders, we get used to the way that we work and the things that we have to um, do, the way we go about doing them, and the requirements that our organizations have of us to deliver those things. So we get used to um, our way of working and changing that ourselves is always a challenge. However, I think that um, the concept of change management perhaps um, can get a little bit, sometimes a, a little blown out of proportion. So it's more about how we manage people from one thing to another rather than how we help them transition themselves from one place to another place. So when you start using different words and different language and you stop or, or perhaps talk less about change management and more about transitioning forward and transitioning for the good of the business, it shifts things in people's minds and it allows them to understand what that movement is about and what it can help create and generate for the organization for whom they work 
So it really change management and and understanding these are the things that we need to do in the sequence we need to do them and how we need to make sure we keep moving forwards towards that ultimate goal is very important. But that is managing the process. You want to be able to bring people along that path as well and that's where transition is, is the, I think, one of the most important things about around um, for effective and efficient change to happen. It, it sounds like the term transition may also create less anxiety than, uh, than, than change management. I and, think you're uh, right, Martin. I think that's a very good, a good point because as I was saying, it, sh it can reposition in people's minds what is happening and why it is happening, which really is the ultimate, isn't it? The organization has to move from where they are now to where they need to be for business reasons. For often for them to be able to stay in business, so transit you have to transition the organisation as well as the people within it. So I think uh, using different words is very important there, and the PMs PMs can help that and help keep their projects connected to the business um, by using different types of language as well, understanding the uh, motivations of their stakeholders where they fit within the organization's um, agenda, what their own agendas are, and understand those, but also not necessarily understand them so they can change their project to fit those agendas, but to be able to relate those agendas to what their project is there to deliver. Okay. Um, Naomi, um, you, you bring to, to the panel today a, a perspective on leadership and, and the discussion that, uh, that I've just had with, with Deanne. I, it sounds to me like um, we're going to need uh, some leadership to, to be able to, to affect the, the change management as opposed to uh, simple management. Um, so how, how do you think that, uh, that leaders, project leaders, um, the the leaders of a project manage of a project uh, can help ensure that the the project remains connected to the business and and to the people. Well, thanks, Martin, um, for asking that question. You know, Vicky and Deanne certainly laid out the foundation and uh, the the reasons why a business lead is so critical to a project. As a project manager, when you are assigned to a project, you really need to let your sponsor know that you require a business lead to be a key resource on your project. You know, business analysts are so essential in this role, and unfortunately, it's been my experience that project managers get get stuck in this role. So, organizations really need to understand the importance of this role because, uh, uh, really, you know, as Deanne Vicky said, a business lead should champion the business requirements. They should be very involved in testing and end user acceptance. They need to be a very close partner with the project manager, and they really need to rally the business team. When you have a project manager that gets wrapped up in that role and has to you know, trade hats off between the two, the project manager is not staying focused on really what their role and their job is to do. So, so to that end, I would say mature PMs will work to defer this to the business and business analysts in the organization if they could bring those resources onto the project or unfortunately they're going to have to rise to the occasion. What will happen in organizations who aren't, who don't have mature project or program managers is they're going to be challenged in this area and unfortunately this could lead to signs and symptoms of project failure. So I think that what you need to do as a project manager is you need to make make it a focus to go take a business analysis class, add that to your personal development plan. I think the other thing, um, like Vicki mentioned, um, you need to get very involved in your local IIBA chapter. Um, 
attend those meetings, uh, invite some of your resources to attend those meetings, because I think as a project manager and a leader, you need to grow resources in your organization to be business analysts that you can utilize and rely on uh, to be key members of your project. So we've seen three perspectives on uh, project management, how, how project managers can um, connect the, the project to the business and uh, the, the, the correct business analysis, um, uh, change management, and, and leadership. Do you have something that you wanted to, to bring into this? Yes, uh, so both uh, Deanne and, and Naomi uh, touched on that, you know, projects today are about making the business better. Um, you know, before the dot-com bust or before the latest recession, there might have been a lot of technology projects for the sake of technology, but now our focus is more business. Now, one thing we have to remember um, when it comes to IT projects that, you know, project managers are thinking IT solutions on the forefront, but it's not always an IT solution that's going to meet the business need. So getting that other perspective and having those conversations is going to make sure that the time we do spend developing those solutions uh, really does address the core business need and isn't um, some other type of, of Band-Aid or fix. Well, th thank you very much. Um, the uh, Having discussed how the uh, project remains how the project remains connected to the business. I'd like each of you to, to, to take a, a moment or two and tell me um, what what are your favorite or, or the best practice um, project management processes, tools, and techniques that you've found that help you to connect to the stakeholders and to deliver value to the project. Um, we'll go in reverse order. I'll start with you, Naomi. Okay. Well, I think uh, one very good best practice that I've used and I've seen used in other organizations like Hewlett Packard is something called retrospectives or what we probably affectionately know as lessons learned. And these are these should be done uh, in throughout the project and allow you to engage your team and stakeholders to share feedback. And it's kind of like a, using a Deming approach. Um, you are going to plan, you're going to do, you're going to check, you're going to act. So it should become an integral part of your project. So that organizations who can focus on their mature, more mature project management methodology is going to help them build in their quality. They can implement more rigor and change management that, that will be necessary so that as you take these lessons learned, you can apply them to affect process and defect improvement as well as you're going to be able to gather metrics throughout the project. I absolutely agree with you, Naomi. Uh, it's been my uh, observation that all too often lessons learned is a document created at the end of the project and then shelved um, indefinitely, which um, if companies were to use them better, uh, they can certainly gain significant value. I think there's also something to be said for uh, lessons learned from other companies, uh, and that's part of why we're doing professional development today. Uh, Deanne, can you uh, off offer some um, project management processes that, and some lessons learned from your extensive experience? Yeah, I think uh, one of the big ones, actually, is that um, uh, poor practices or um, practices that perhaps don't work are repeated. So uh, more often than not, uh, lessons learned or retrospectives seem to bring up the same things over and over again. So I think a big lesson from that is, as you say, Martin, don't just do the report and file it away. Actually do something with it. Um, take those things that didn't work or perhaps could be improved or weren't so great or whichever way you want to package it and actually action something, do something about it. Don't just say, oh, well, that wasn't so great, but then do it again. That doesn't, that's, <laughs> that's not the purpose of a, of a uh, retrospective. You really do have to um, make some changes. Um, and I think also um, a very important, another important technique that PMs and um, project teams in general can make 
huge uh, use of um, our soft skills need to really build relationships. Relationships are very important. Um, and make sure that you're listening to things and watching things that um, are subtle, are not necessarily said, body language, things like that. So active listening as well as um, developing and honing your soft skills are very important techniques that um, project managers can use and their project teams can use to support their um, sound processes and tools. And don't be afraid to speak up for your project. Uh, don't be afraid. Um, you're, you're there to lead this and to deliver an outcome. So, you know, you, it's part of your role to challenge others and um, to be comfortable to be challenged yourself. So those are also ways that you can actually, um, uh, you know, enact change yourself and make different, uh, sorry, those things that you learnt through your retrospective that perhaps didn't work very well, um, to perhaps improve them and uh, make them better next time. Mm, I agree. Vicky, you, um, you, you have straddled both the, the project management and, and the BA. Um, you must have an awful lot of uh, processes and tools at your disposal. Yeah, probably a, a few too many to, to go into here, but on, on both of them, uh, and it's in both bodies of knowledge that, that stakeholder analysis is such a critical piece. And not just doing that analysis up front, but making sure you revisit it, because sometimes people's interest have change or new sto stakeholders come up. So just as you review um, your risk register, going back to that stakeholder analysis on a regular basis um, can help you identify something early on. And then I also like uh, Deanne's point about um, you know, being sure to, you know, let people know if you need help. You know, if there's a risk because somebody is not attending a meeting or, or you have the wrong representation, uh, that might be a risk that you need to record and address. If it doesn't get addressed in that way, it may be something you have to bring to a higher level to escalate. Uh, but in, the thing we have to keep in, in mind for all of this is what's in the best interest of the project with the project success being uh, reliant on bringing value to the business. Your suggestion um, is that the, the stakeholder analysis, which uh, also ties into um, the, uh, the, the soft skills uh, that Deanne was mentioning, and uh, I, I think it probably frequently comes up in the, uh, in the retrospectives that, uh, that Naomi was, was discussing with us. All right. <clears throat> Thank you very much, panel, for, for your discussion of uh, the, uh, the business side of project management. I want to ask you some questions specifically about uh, uh, women in project management, uh, uh, some of the, the challenges that, that, that women face, and, and also some of the, uh, the opportunities uh, that are there for them. Um, uh, Naomi, I, I want to uh, ask you first about uh, about leadership. Within the title, it says project management, but we're we're seeing so much nowadays about how they need to to provide leadership to their teams. Um, how do women PMs do this uh, with confidence? Um, and and also, if you could um, t touch briefly on um, Im imposter syndrome, um, where Women uh, sometimes feel that uh, that they've been put into a position um, more through uh, through luck than through um, through recognition of their of their skills. Um, how do how do women PMs uh, provide that uh, the the leadership without uh, falling into that trap? Well, this is a a, a really key area that that I think as a woman in project management, you really need to focus on your personal growth in this area. Uh, I think women really need to, to lead with authenticity and integrity. Um, the, you know, women have great um, soft skills. So 
we're, we're good at building relationships. You need to focus in your organizations and on your projects on building relationships that create partnerships. You need to communicate with confidence and clarity. You need to do this up, down, and across the organization. You need to be able to change your communication you know, styles to meet your audience. And with your project team, you really need to be willing to, to roll up your sleeves during crunch time. You're, you've been working on this project for a while, your team has been working hard, and you're really going to, to really show your leadership by rolling up your sleeves and getting in there with them and letting them know that you're behind them, that you're there uh, listening to remove any barriers, uh, resolve any problems, and just make sure that they can keep the project continuing to move forward. So really, um, as, you know, as, as a leader, you need to show up and be present for your team every day. You need to have an open door policy, and when your team comes to you with problems and, in, and issues, um, sure, you're busy, and it's easy to tell them, you know, come back, make an appointment, how about tomorrow? But I think just a little empathy and active listening goes a long way. Um, people show up your, at your door or take time, make the time to talk to you. Um, just, just actively listen um, and listen for the messages, watch the body language. Uh, you'll, you'll gain a lot from those interactions with your team. And I think that you should always be self-aware. Um, this is a key tenet of emotional intelligence that women are great at, and I think it's going to help leverage your influence on projects and in your organization. And it's going to allow you, along with your um, key strengths, to really to really shine. Is there a um, is there a, a, a per perception amongst uh, project teams that um, that a that a that a woman uh, leader would bring a, a a specific style or a specific strength that uh, that that she may have? that uh, wouldn't necessarily be there with, uh, with their, their male counterpart? Well, you know, I think certainly, um, you know, I've kind of talked all about the, the soft skills, um, the listening skills, building relationships, um, showing empathy. You, you might not find this um, with your male counterparts as much, um, I, and I and I hesitate to say this, but I think sometimes it's looked on as a sign of weakness that you you know that you are kind of um, showing a more of a, an emotional side to yourself. But um, people are people, and people are your most important asset in your organization, and that's another reason why um, women are really a, a key in your organization and on your projects. Um, to be to be leaders and should be looked on and also thought of in in that way um, because it's it's really really it's what men and women bring to the table um, and it's applying leadership um, and I think um, whether you're a man or a woman you need to step up uh, to do that and focus on not only your soft skills but your hard skills. And, um, and uh, that will take you a, a long way uh, to be successful as a project manager. I, I think the, the, the PMP certification says that we have the, the hard skills, the, the technical skills. Um, I, I think a, a differentiator in, in many cases is the, uh, is the soft skills, um, uh, unfortunately named in my opinion, but um, Definitely a, a, a differentiator. Um, Deanne, you've you've co-authored a, a chapter or written a chapter on uh, on on EQ and uh, for an upcoming book. Can can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I have, um, and it's a very interesting topic actually because um, really it's all about human dynamics, isn't it? So. Uh, again, there are lots of different uh, words that I guess you can apply about being interested in uh, uh, exactly that human dy dynamics, whether it's psychology or um, more emotional intelligence or um, you know just normal everyday behaviours. And it's quite fascinating to watch people at work 
and um, also socially and how sometimes that contrast can be quite quite substantial, um, how people behave in different, uh, different situations. Um, so yeah, emotional intelligence, having, a, having um, even a, any little interest in how people tick um, is really important in leadership because as well as uh, wanting to achieve what the organisation needs, you're also wanting to, I guess, as a leader, and um, whether it's a project or anything else, help people achieve what they want to achieve. So um, that's really important to understand how people tick, where their hot buttons are, what, uh, what, well, like a better phrase, turns them on, if you like, and uh, certainly in a business scenario, how can you, how can you as a leader and a project manager get the best out of them for what it is you're delivering to the business, but also for themselves, because people also need to develop and grow in their own right. And uh, the soft skills are really important there, as are, um, that includes, of course, being able to build relationships, uh, your, how you communicate with people, one size doesn't fit all, um, the message, underlying message may be the same, but how you deliver that and how people receive that message is different depending on the situation and the person. Um, good leaders as well um, understand that uh, they don't have all the answers. They appreciate they don't have all the answers. So are quite willing to uh, have people around them and build a strong team of people who in, in some areas know more than they do and are better at what um, needs to be done than the leader themselves. And that's that means then that uh, you're all, all moving in the same direction and all got a contribution to make, which is very important. I think, though, it's, um, it's key as part of that, and I think Naomi was touching on this, that sometimes women in leadership roles are viewed as um, perhaps weaker than their male counterparts. And I think, though, that one of um, their strengths or, or women's strengths is about seeing how people behave differently and um, um, and, a, and a capability to be firm yet fair. So strong leaders are able to say that we're here to do a job and this is what it is that we need to achieve and these are our boundaries. However, I'm I'm open to what it is that how it is that you think is the best way to achieve that. So that firm yet fair approach, I think, is um, is important and developing the skills, the soft skills around that. So along with that then comes respect. People respect you and you're able to achieve quite significant, significant amounts through those kinds of relationships that you can build and develop. Which uh, I, if, if, if you want to have a project management career in a, in a business, um, I think we need to be able to focus beyond the, the, the project and into, um, into portfolios and programs. And I, I believe that um, with, the, with the focus on the, um, on the soft skills and relationships that um, Deanne talked about and, and Naomi, that um, a, a key part of that is, is going to be building the, 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 the teams uh, for the long term, I just want to reference back to our first question because um, what what we're saying there is that um, the the programs also need to connect to the business, and it's been my experience that some uh, some male managers, some uh, overly aggressive managers, can get a a single project done, but lose team members or uh, lose business capabilities because the people get the people stay for the project and then they and then they leave shortly afterwards. Um, uh, Vicky, I, I know that in your your role as a, a business analyst, um, one one aspect of that uh, uh, revolves around conflict and, and conflict resolution. Does it not? Uh, in terms of um, the the requirements that people say they want or have to have, and and what the what the project manager is is prepared to commit to, and 
Um, uh, also, uh, what um, and and I'll throw this out for the whole panel. What uh, what level of assertiveness can um, is is there a difference in the level of assertiveness that um, that different genders bring to the to the table to meetings? Well, and that's a good question. I know in my own experience, um, you know, I know discrimination in general is on the decline and becoming more rare, but it is still out there. And there have been instances where I've, uh, I guess, almost bullied uh, by managers who don't understand my expertise. And so, you know, we have to be assertive. We have to be able um, to to prove our expertise, but do it in a way that uh, saves space and, and doesn't get uh, argumentative or such. Uh, and one way that can help you do that is to, you know, find a nugget that's going to help that person uh, see your expertise with something that's going to that's going to help them. Uh, so one example might be in a business analyst role. Uh, nobody, I shouldn't say nobody. There is team members that felt. You know, we know how to. We've done requirements before. We don't know why we need you here. But when I was able to present a new tool for prioritizing that they really bought into, then they started listening to me more and more. So being able to demonstrate that expertise and being able to stand up and say, "Hey, I have it. Give me a chance," um, without it turning into uh, a, a debate or you know some type of conflict uh, is, is key there. And I think you know having that confidence and believing in ourselves. One thing we can't do is to take it or and take a risk of responding to it passive aggressively later because we just kind of blew it off and don't want to deal with it. So we do have to be uh, assertive and deal with those issues as they come up. And the way in which a a, a woman can uh, or addresses a, a, a conflict the. Uh, uh, the the confidence that's that's required, uh, as as Naomi was describing, the um, the the soft skills that that Deanne um, brings to the to to the uh, to the table. I'd, I'd also suggest that there's a there's a lot of material um, available that relates to um, introverts. Um, there's a there's another niche out there which is the introverted project manager. Um, that, uh, that that also must uh, uh, work with relationships and uh, and soft skills to to uh, to achieve their ends. Um, Deanne, can you uh, uh, add to 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 what Vicky had to say about uh, the um, uh, either conflict resolution or the the her what what she was describing in terms of um, assertiveness and uh, bullying. Yeah, just it was something quite quick actually that um, triggered in my mind from what Vicky was saying. Saying and um, difference between assertive and aggressive. Um, sometimes there's a, a big ego thing there, isn't there? And and certainly as a as a female in a fairly male dominated um, uh, area of business, um, I tend to see that quite a bit where. Uh, that differentiation isn't perhaps quite understood. So you may be, as a female, being assertive. However, sometimes it comes ag across as being aggressive. And I think one way of um, of being able to be more confident in your assertiveness is to perhaps say fact focused. So if you're focused on the facts, and you're um, then you're not as you're not perhaps uh, bringing emotion into it. And you're not uh, perhaps battering up against those egos, uh, and again, also in conflict resolution, that can be very powerful. Where you're uh, um, perhaps diff diffusing the situation a little bit by uh, not not engaging, not enrolling in the conflict itself, and staying focused on the facts and what uh, you're you're all there to achieve ultimately, and how perhaps that. Uh, to come to some sort of agreement of how best to do that, given the situation that you're um, either attempting to resolve or diffuse. So I think being fact focused is very important, and not get caught up emotionally in uh, what is going on, because everyone can get that feeling of 
oh, I've done something wrong, or perhaps I'm not being heard, I'm not being listened to, they, they're not interested in what, uh, what I'm doing or what I'm here to try and achieve. So taking that emotion out of it and sticking with the facts can be very powerful. We've, we've talked a little bit about some of the challenges. I think we've talked about some of the, the strengths. Um, the, in, in terms of um, uh, you yourself as a, as a, as a PM, uh, receiving the uh, uh, feedback uh, uh, each each year, what what did, what would you say is the the number one thing that you would want to continue doing that that, that you're currently doing the the a, a, a behavior or a, a style that you that you bring to your projects, Naomi. So you know, as as a woman, um, I I still think that. Um, it is, it is our soft skills that ha that make us shine. It's our it's our gifted area that that women have, and there is a new book out by John Maxwell called Fifteen Laws of Growth, and I'll just kind of paraphrase, but I think women need to lead in their strength zone and step out of their comfort zone to grow as a leader, and that has been um, my I, I guess key to success. If you recognize what you're good at, you need to stay focused on that. But you also need to challenge yourself and kind of step outside of, of what you're comfortable doing and try new things. Take on new stretch projects. And that's going to help you lead uh, different kinds of projects, work with different kinds of teams and sponsors and executives in your organization. Um, like, you know, Deanne, she's a global consultant, so she's traveling, you know, to different countries, working with different stakeholders. Um, you know, Vicki, as a business analyst, you, you see projects and the organization from a different perspective, but you will never do that if you do not allow yourself to step out of your comfort zone. And as women, you need to focus on the fact that, that you build strong interpersonal relationships. That's a gift that you have, so you need to use it. And the other thing, too, um, women are great coaches. You coach and mentor your teams, you coach and mentor your sponsor and your stakeholders, but you yourself are a very coachable resource. You need to take advantage of the fact that um, you need to get all the insight you can when you meet with your sponsor. You need to uh, listen to your team when they are giving you feedback. And you should also seek out feedback from your functional manager, too, who could help guide you through the politics and the other organizational challenges that you're going to um, run into when you start leading um, projects that are uh, local, regional, statewide, you know, global. And I think the other thing that women need to realize is that I think self-awareness, um, you know, being a key tenant of emotional intelligence is where we live daily. So uh, I think um, I think that's a good thing. I think that's it's a good thing that we are able to be in touch with our emotions because it enables us to relate better with others, and that's going to help us uh, create high-performing teams. And I think we also, as women, focus on results. I think women are very results-oriented, and we're looking for win-wins. Um, I think it's a very positive thing for an organization. You don't kind of want to get stuck in a quagmire focusing, focusing on the detail when you should be focusing on getting a quick win and keeping the project moving forward. And I think that we have the ability to show a lot of empathy. So when you're dealing with teams, you're dealing with people and you're dealing with people in the organization, and projects are all about people. So the fact that you are able to relate with them is going to, I think, really help you grow um, as a leader. And I think that's a, it's a positive, and it's, an, it's a win. It's a win-win. Yes, yes, very much so. Um, Vicki, you mentioned um, the, um, the, the, the conflict sometimes between the, the, the BA and the team, or the, the, the BA and the and, and the PM, is it your experience that um, men are more 
competitive, that there's more frequently a uh, a win a win lose a winner and a loser in a in a in a in a uh, in 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 a, in a conflict um, as opposed to um, uh, to to women uh, or is that just a uh, stereotype? Yeah, I'm not sure that there is a lot of difference there. Women can be um, very competitive, uh, you know, especially with each other. Uh, hopefully, we're we're not going there. You know, being nurturing and, and empathetic. And you know, one of the things that I like to do as a leader, whatever my role is, is to rely on the expertise of those people around me to, to know that you know we have a an architect because that's their specialty, and, and to rely on them to help um, think through the solutions and come to the right answer. Uh, as far as the the business analyst and, and project manager, it's there is inherent conflict in the roles because the project manager is more focused on um, schedule and cost as they should be uh, where the business analyst is trying to bring the most value to the business that they can but I find that to be a healthy conflict um, I projects I work on where you have um, two strong people that are willing to debate are probably going to come up with better decisions um, because they're they're talking through all the points of both sides and they're getting clarification from the sponsor with with great information so the the, the conflict between a BA and PM is, is is healthy and and good for a project but I'm not sure there's any more conflict um, you know with a you know where, where it's male female versus uh, you know female male um, I just want to uh, move 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 us on to the next slide. We have we have questions on that slide that relate to to this discussion as well. Um, how to be successful in a male dominated field, and I think we've um, we've been discussing this. Uh, some of the the natural strengths that that that, that women bring to to project management, um, and. Uh, some of the ways in which uh, women can can influence or or hinder their their own success um, in 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 the in this particular field. Um, Deanne, you you were uh, involved in uh, IT project management, were you not? Yes. Yes. And Correct. that is a a fairly male dominated field. Um, how were you able to? Uh, to to leverage your strengths and uh, and um, build trust and and let the guys know that you had the, uh, the 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 technical skills to lead the project. Yeah, the very interesting um, question, especially the the last bit about um, the technical skills to lead the project, um, because actually while I'm um, the majority of my work is uh, related to IT projects, I'm actually not a technical person. So I don't come from a technical background. I come from a business background and just happen to have spent uh, most of my career involved in uh, IT uh, projects, so delivering IT solutions to the business. Um, so really I guess I'm from the flip side which is um, it gives me perhaps a, a natural advantage or different kinds of strengths that I can bring to IT projects. So coming at them with a business view, uh, the, this is what we need to achieve for the, for the good of the business. Um, how we do it technically, um, I'm not necessarily about to challenge. Uh, what I will uh, challenge though is how that technology will um, uh, deliver what the business needs and not lock the business into a place where it can't uh, escape from. So um, yeah, in, in terms of uh, my teams and, and confidence that um, teams have in me, again I think it's very much back to those relationships uh, and a very important part of that that has um, helped me personally through my career has been um, being personable, uh, being one of the team, not uh, separating myself out from the team and saying, well, I'm the PM or I'm the consultant or I'm the leader, therefore I'm separate from you. I'm not. I'm part of the team with everybody else. And uh, also, personally, I like to have fun. 
So I'm, while I'm doing a serious job and um, it has serious implications, I like to have fun while I'm doing it. So I have conversations with people that are not business related. Um, one of my um, pet likes is um, uh, eating pies. So I go and eat pies for lunch with the guys. And you know we have a lot of fun and we talk about stuff that has nothing to do with the project. But that builds rapport and it builds relationships. And um, when there is an issue or you need to challenge something or have a healthy discussion and um, uh, you know, constructive conflict about something that needs to be resolved, you can do that in an open, honest and um, respectful manner. And I think that that um, really helps you, um, and I think regardless of whether you're male or female, or female but certainly women and relating in a um, male dominated sector is, it breaks down that barrier and you're just one of the, you're just one of the team. Even though you're not specifically coding PHP or uh, configuring the servers. Absolutely, absolutely. But I do want to know, as the as the PM or as the leader of that piece of work, I do want to know where it's up to, what time it's go, well, you know, when it's due, uh, the the status of it, where the um, issues and challenges are, because I'm there to support and help resolve those, not tell them the best way to do it. So leave, I leave them to get on with their job, but they also know uh, what my expectations are. So we have a healthy, um, a healthy level of respect uh, for skills and expertise and uh, for um, deliverables. So that, that firm yet fair approach that I spoke about earlier as well, I'm very, very firm and, and, uh, and uh, clear clear about my uh, expectations and the team knows that and that's, uh, that sets a very healthy scene from the, uh, from the get-go. I had a, um, a, a project manager who definitely could not uh, actually sit on the keyboard and do any of the, of the technical work but um, when, uh, when there was an emergency and and, and people had to go into the office on Sunday uh, to deal with something, um, she was prepared, not necessarily every time, but she was prepared to go in and be with the team. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Lead, lead, how, lead how you um, expect to be led and, um, you know, uh, just because you're the, the leader or the project manager doesn't mean that you... Um, you know, don't have to participate in the in the less than desirable office hours, or um, you know, leaves you immune to certain things. You're there to support the team and to help them achieve what it is that um, they need to in any way that that you know, in whatever way makes sense. And I, and I think that that some of the soft skills that uh, that project managers can can bring to the to the table. Is that that reading of people um, to to know that uh, even though they don't say it, they they appreciate the fact that you that you did come in, uh, yeah. or they, they they appreciate the uh, the the subtleties of conversation, the the the, the body language and the the way in which um, people sometimes the specific words that they're saying or not saying. Um, yeah, exactly. You may you may be there not actually doing anything, but the fact that you are present says volumes, speaks volumes. Very powerful. Right. Well, I, th I think we've had an awesome discussion about um, uh, the the strengths, the the challenges that women face, and the uh, the opportunities um, that uh, the the natural strengths that they bring. Um, we're we're going to, uh, to to wrap up the, the discussion a, a little bit with uh, with a with a quick um, uh, set set of, of questions for for each of you, and uh, that that will be on um, women in your your greatest influence, 
Um, uh, I want you to, to, to give advice to a, a young woman uh, considering project management and uh, top three tips for, for project managers. So a question I've been dying to, to ask uh, the, 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 the women on the panel here, um, is there actually a gender gap? Uh, it, do, you, do you find that to be true or is it, uh, are, you, are you just seen as, as the Anne said, as one of the guys? Um, Naomi, uh, what do you think? Is there a gender gap? Well, Martin, uh, I think the answer to that question is absolutely. It, 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 it still exists today, and there's probably no newspaper, uh, no, no Twitter feed, no uh, you know, commentary through Forbes or uh, Wall Street Journal that you won't find today talking about it. So, um, you know, women are getting paid less, but um, most recently the Lilly Ledbetter Act was signed by President Obama, and that kind of, um, I think that kind of, uh, you know, brought some, uh, I think, awareness that um, this, this, this needs to be addressed. Um, and, you know, in a, in a, um, in a article that was uh, put out through, uh, Planet Money, uh, there was a radio show through the National Public Radio that talked about what, what American women do for work. And it basically said, uh, they have a little chart that I found that said, 40 years ago, only one in three American workers was a woman, and today it's one in two. Now, I wouldn't say that that's, you know, huge strides there, but with the downturn in the economy, um, we're finding that a lot of men have lost their jobs, and women are are the are the breadwinners. But unfortunately, because we make less, we're not bringing money into the household, and we're not being able to spend money. So we're putting it back in the economy, and that's you know that's a problem. And you know, for those uh, you know kind of women who are at the C level suite, CIOs, CEOs. Uh, boardroom presidents are finding that you're, you're not finding many women in those roles either. So, you know, as they kind of talk about, we're really not really um, breaking the glass ceiling, um, but it, it's still a problem that exists. And I think that um, women um, just collectively, I think we just need to, we just need to kind of keep focused on stepping up to challenges. I think we need to find um, coaches, as we go through our careers and, you know, you wish to uh, progress to, uh, you know, the upper upper level and move on to an executive position, I, need, I think we need to um, kind of put away the idea that we need to be fearful of failure. I think if we're going to fail, we need to fail fast and fail forward. It's kind of the mantra for today. You know, if you're an entrepreneur out there and you're trying to do a, you know, start up a new company or start a, start a new initiative and, you know, trying to get seed money for a project, um, that's important. And I think the biggest thing of all is as women, as, as um, uh, a group out there, we need to support each other. I think that's huge. And I think for young women today, they're looking for role models. If, if you're out there and you are leading, step up and be a role model. And the most important thing leaders should be doing is growing other leaders. So um, that's kind of um, my my take on on that topic. The um, the the in many of the PMI chapters have a uh, have a, a, a formal mentoring program. Um, are are you all involved with your your PMI chapter, or in Vicky's case, uh, also the IIBA chapter? And and do you have uh, formal mentoring programs? I have as well seen uh, formal mentoring in different organizations, uh, and not so much within the PMI or IIBA has it been specific towards women. But when I worked for the state of Washington, there were uh, different programs and the different agencies I worked in along those lines. So I think they, they exist. Uh, it, it's finding them. So for me personally, um, 
I've not um, been involved in any formal mentoring programs. I think that there are pros and cons for those, like there are for anything. Um, I think if you are um, looking for a mentor, um, a formal program may give you a means to um, to to access different mentors, but I think it, you still have to find one that you can relate to and. Uh, that works for you and the way that you learn and the types of things that you um, perhaps want men to be mentored about. So um, yeah, I think that as I said there are pros and cons for formal ones and personally I've not been involved in any formal program such as that. Okay. Um, I know that uh, recently um, uh, Marissa Meyer was uh, named uh, CEO of, of Yahoo, and uh, there was an awful lot of attention paid to, to that announcement, and, and particularly the, uh, the, the fact that uh, she was a, a, a woman and a pregnant woman uh, as well. What did you think of that attention? Disproportionate, perhaps? <laughs> perhaps focusing on, uh, on her, uh, the fact that on her gender rather than her ability and capability and um, and competency to do the role. Uh, I'm sure if uh, if uh, if it was a um, a man uh, receiving or being put uh, you know taking that role, it would have been an announcement about the the person where they had come from, uh, what they had achieved to date, and uh, what their goals and objectives were, and less about their family or if their wife was pregnant or if they had a dog or you know when they did their supermarket shopping so yeah I think uh, there are some things in th that the media um, focused attention on where that attention is, uh, is disproportionate and, and has no bearing whatsoever on the person's capability or competency to actually perform the role that they've been, uh, been uh, asked to do. I guess you could say I have a strong opinion. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess my take on it, because I've kind of heard some conversations from some young women and who are project managers, and, you know, I think there's both kind of maybe some negative and positive connotations. And I think, I think you know, one of the conversations that um, was going around about um, Marissa Mayer's uh, uh, you know, promotion and the fact that she was pregnant and about to have a baby, um, it really kind of shed light on the fact that, you know, can women have it all? Can they have a job and, you know, family and can they create that work-life balance? Because it is a balancing act as, um, you know, as a mom, um, I went back to work and um, after I was uh, pregnant and had my daughter and it, and it's, it, it has been a difficult. It's, it's kind of a juggling act. But I think um, women today who are looking for, um, you know, to either graduate from college, get a job in an organization, they're kind of looking for role models and they're kind of looking for the fact that, well, gee, you know, can I, you know, go to school, get a job, have a family, you know, is, is that possible? And to see a role model out there who's who's doing that and um, that they're talking about it, I think kind of, you know, uh, gives them some perspective, gives them an idea that women can work and have a family and be able to accomplish that. And I think it kind of gives, gives them some, um, some perspective. Is there a, a different career path for, uh, for, for women than for men? I mean, we've talked about a gender gap. Um, and if there if there is a, a difference in the in the career path, is uh, is project management well suited to um, the, that type of of interrupted career where um, you know you you work for a few years, you're a mom for a few years, you go back into the workplace. Speaking of the gender gap, it there are pockets where it still exists and you know think speaking of vocation for women i think if you get into the education you know healthcare social services you see a lot more women leaders taking on that old you know secretary nurse uh, teacher type role um, in it looking at the yahoo example that's where it becomes an, an anomaly and uh, becomes noteworthy in the news 
uh, within the state of Washington, it's interesting here in that we've had, uh, you know, we currently have a female governor. Uh, she's on her way out, but uh, eight years in office with a primarily, uh, you know, I think a stronger, a larger proportion of female uh, cabinet members. And then we have two uh, Cong US congresswomen here. Within the state of Washington, there's great examples every time you turn around. So one thing I experienced last week, I was at the PMI uh, Global Congress in Vancouver, BC, and they had a, uh, a panel much like ours talking about women in project management. And I was listening to some of the chatter afterwards, and many women were saying, oh, there's no discrimination. I don't know why, we, why we're even still talking about this. It's like, well, you haven't experienced it yet. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist, because there are those pockets still out there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been a project manager in IT for 27 years, and um, you know, pretty much I was either the only female, or um, there were a, a few of us, and we were either, you know, in the beginning, kind of in administrative roles, but then, um, you know, as I progressed in IT, um, leading projects. You know, again, I kind of, you know, you go from um, administrative role to kind of a, a technical role that I led and, and then a leadership role. And I'm kind of back in the position where I'm only one of few women in this role and working with mostly um, men. And so I, I, I think that... Um, I think that you kind of have to get some thick skin, um, and and you also kind of have to have some perspective about what you know how you're going to have that work-life balance, how you're going to make it work for you, and um, is your um, organization um, supportive? Do you have a, a a good culture where it's you know supporting the 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 mission and the vision and the values, and do they match your values? And I I kind of really think that it's really all all about that if you really love what you do, it doesn't matter what your profession is, it's just that um, does, it, does it match with the organization that you're working for? And I think that's kind of a, a question everybody needs to ask, ask of themselves too, um, because I think at, at some point you need, to, you need to take a look at that and, and consider, um, you know, are you going to transition and go into a, a different um, career path in a different industry? Because certainly, I think as a project manager, your skills are very transferable um, to any industry, whether it be IT, healthcare, um, uh, construction, telecom. You know, being a project manager, you really have uh, there's some benefits there. I think there's a lot to do with attitude. Sometimes, if you think that. Uh, some, uh, if you think that there's a gender gap, then perhaps there will be um, almost, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy. But I mean, that's not to say that it doesn't exist at all, because it does. Uh, and I think that there are um, in a lot of places, certainly in Europe as well as other parts of the world, a lot of uh, uh, of it is influenced culturally. Uh, in um, that may be slightly less of a um, of an influencer in the U.S. than it is in other parts of the world, but uh, there are lots of countries where you know the traditional male role, and that's still very prevalent in today's world. So um, there is a uh, underlying uh, tension, if you like, of well, um, this is a male-dominated society, so that's just the way it is. So women have a lot of work to do to close that themselves, and uh, again, through um, proving themselves and building those relationships um, and uh, their attitude and how they approach it. And if they don't see that there's a gender gap, then they won't behave in that way. And uh, slowly over time, uh, it, it changes, but it does take a very a very long time. Okay. Um, well, we are um, seeing the, 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 the top of the, uh, the, the hour approaching. I'd like to, to move us on to, uh, to the quickie round, if you like. First question, who was the greatest influence in choosing project management as your career? Did you choose project management as your career? Deanne. Um, I didn't choose project management as my career, to be honest with you. Um, I'm actually still figuring out what it is I want to do when I grow up. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I guess you would class me as an accidental project manager. The um, 
the types of skills and capabilities and competencies I have um, and the experiences um, and expertise that I've developed over my years of working have sort of uh, led me along that path. Um, having originally started as a member of an um, ERP system implementation, I was a member of the team. So a natural progression through that kind of uh, that kind of work sort of led me up to leading those kinds of projects and then on to different projects from there. So um, I guess it was more of a natural progression rather than a, a, a specific, I want to be a project manager when I grow up. Um, yeah, and, and so, <laughs> so in terms of greatest influence, um, I wouldn't say would be around choosing that path. It would be more about my professional and um, and development of my experience and knowledge. So there have been some key people that I've uh, worked with over the years that have had um, significant influence on how I've developed as both a person and um, a professional in this kind of in this sector. Mm -hmm. Right. How about you, Naomi? Well, I guess I'm I'm kind of a, also along the same lines as um, Deanne, but I I think I'm um, I'm kind of working on um, what what my focus focus is and kind of moving towards you know my future career development. But I really started out as a technical lead, a systems engineer and an architect in information technology for uh, the public sector. And I found that um, I was tapped often to lead um, many projects that had an IT component for the business. And then I started working at a very large data center um, here in California. And I really uh, got some insight into working with customers, understanding what their business needs uh, were, what their business drivers were, um, what some of the programs were that were impacted by these systems that we were trying to help um, install for them. And kind of that really kind of brought it home for me. So I got involved at the local chapter level. And I think then is where I think I found kind of my niche. And, and I decided, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing this, I love what I'm doing, and I think it would be worth it to invest in myself to uh, get a credential. And what the president of the uh, PMI Sacramento Valley chapter, uh, Payson Hall, um, was, was kind of pretty influential at that time. And I would say that he had a key influence in, in me choosing project management as a career. And the other thing, I uh, joined their board of directors at the time. I was elected to be um, their uh, vice president of communications. And I was also um, doing that and continuing to work for the state at the, at the, at the data center. And um, a project manager and um, of, of the data center, um, Karen Walkup, she was um, a great coach and a great mentor, and she kind of helped me, you know, grow as a project manager, and she was uh, very instrumental. So I really had kind of two key people who had worked in the public and private sector. They were practitioners. They had a passion for project management. They were great role models for me, and that really kind of helped me realize um, how, how I, as um, a leader in, in the public sector, could, could uh, grow my skills to be a better project manager. And so um, I think um, now I'm, I'm kind of focused on really um, my, my goal today is um, really paying it for, forward and sharing with my community of project managers to advance the profession and um, help grow grow it one project manager at a time. And I and I, I think you've done an an an, an awesome job uh, here with the uh, with the women's theme, the women in project management for the uh, International Project Management Day, um, for of which this uh, this panel discussion is a is a is a 
seminar, a, a presentation for that. Uh, Vicki, you've chosen both uh, project management and uh, business analysis. What, how did you fall into that? Well, in, I, I got into IT uh, back in 1999. Um, I had been a, a power user of the state budget systems working as a budget analyst. And I knew I wanted to get into IT. So when there was a position open for a product manager that was uh, kind of half business analyst, uh, half uh, trainer help desk, uh, it was something I was really interested in doing was helping uh, grow the systems that the state used uh, for budgets. And, as I got in there, I you know saw I started learning more about projects and how were they they were run, and I, I knew I wanted to go in that project management direction. Uh, so I did take a certification class, but where I really turned the point was uh, I met a friend in the class, Chandra Moss, who, as I concluded, said, "Hey, there's this PMP certification. I think we should go take um, the test." And I'm like, "Okay, whatever. I you know I could use this in alphabet soup behind my name." But the reason I say that was a turning point is because it was actually, you know, going through the PEMBOK and uh, using uh, Rita Mopehe's book uh, for studying that I'm like, wow, there's some really good information to help make projects um, go s run more smoothly. Uh, which, so really when you look at the influence, it's, it's all of those people that have contributed uh, to the PEMBOK and, and to the knowledge maybe go, oh, I, I get it, and I can see how we can bring more value um, to the state by doing projects more efficiently using some of these these best resources. So that's how I got into project management, and it wasn't until I left the state to start a, a solo uh, career um, that I thought, well, you know, if I'm going to be out there and trying to market myself, you know, I have done the business analysis work, I should go look at that certification. And then the same thing happened when I started looking at the uh, business analysis body of knowledge and, and I took an ESI course uh, to help prepare for that exam. I'm like, wow, there's great stuff out here. It didn't exist when I, was, when I first became a BA since the IIBA is so new, but it was like, this is just great information and I don't have to make uh, it up all on my own. I can rely on the expertise that went ahead of me. So, uh, and people ask me today, you know, which, which do you like better, uh, BA or PM? And they have different uh, attractions for me. I, I love being a BA. I love um, you know helping people think of new ways to solve problems, thinking out of the box. Uh, I mentioned earlier that you know sometimes the solution isn't an IT solution, and I love when you know you can help somebody come up with the aha of, wow, we can do this without it being um, a huge in investment, um, or if we're making an investment, at least we know we've explored what those other options look like. Uh, and then I enjoy the PM because I like seeing something come together and seeing something, you know, implemented and, and knowing that I helped, uh, you know, you know, provide the, the leadership and the actual act of leading the team to work together to, to produce the results there. Uh, they're both, uh, you know, strong for me. Uh, if somebody were to force me to choose one or the other, I, I don't know that I could at this point. Uh, I will say, however, I, when I wear both hats, that seems to be problematic since I talked earlier, too, about the PMBA conflict. And when I'm in conflict with myself, uh, that I, I just always win the argument, and that never works well for the project. So I do like to be in one role or the other um, versus trying to manage both. Yeah? Yeah, uh, top three tips. Um, difficult to just restrict to three, really, I guess, isn't it? But um, uh, I think uh, my first one would be about um, know your strengths, but equally recognize your weaknesses. Um, it's very important um, to do that and to, um, so by, by knowing and recognizing those is to keep learning. Uh, don't think that uh, just because you've you know you've studied the books and you've you've uh, had some experience that that's the end of your learning exercise. Uh, keep going. Um, my second one uh, would be um, always show a willingness to adapt. Uh, not every situation is exactly the same. Even if the uh, wherever you are in the world and organisations, processes and um, and issues and uh, challenges. Um, are pretty much the same. The um, the situation will be different, so you do need a willingness to adapt. And my third one, uh, which may be a surprise <laughs> to everybody, is to have fun <laughs> and eat some pies. But have fun and uh, enjoy yourself and uh, and laugh. 
Don't forget to laugh. So they're not particularly uh, they're not particularly uh, project management specific based. I think they're more human based than um, than professional based. But uh, with those, um, you will garner garner respect and uh, understanding of situations and uh, enjoy enjoy your career, whichever path you uh, you choose to take. Naomi. <laughs> Those are great tips. What, 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 uh, what kind of pie are you after? <laughs> I especially like the one about the pie. Um, but but it's but it's true. Um, I I really truly believe that you really need to enjoy and love what you're doing. And fun is fun should be a big part of it. But um, I think my tips that um, kind of have uh, come home to to me um, is is that. You need to lead under your own leadership style. You may have, a, a, you know, a functional manager, or you may be working for a, a chief information officer in IT, and they have their own leadership style. But I think you need to try to um, develop your own because you shouldn't try to lead under someone else's vision and, and values. And I think um, number two would be you need to focus on growing yourself. Um, no one else should be responsible for your own personal development but but you and don't don't wait on your organization to set up a a, a training uh, plan for you don't don't wait for a, a class to be to be offered you should be actively um, looking for opportunities you should be focusing on reflecting on um, where you need to fill gaps um, in your skill sets, and um, you should develop a personal development plan to to um, set set out some key goals and objectives on how you're going to to get there. And number three, um, I I don't think I can say this enough. You need to network, network, network everywhere and anywhere you can. Social media is a great place. You should be on Twitter. You should be on LinkedIn. If you have a local chapter um, that you can attend meetings, definitely go there. Um, meet board members. Meet people from the community. And if you ever have the opportunity to attend a Project Management Institute um, leadership meeting, if you're involved in the chapter, um, or a global congress, um, find, find a way to go. It will be the most, um, I think, kind of uh, enlightening and uh, experience um, because you'll meet people from all over the world. You're going to gain different perspectives, and you're going to come back with a whole new, fresh perspective um, for yourself. Those are some awesome tips, and and, and I and I hope that. Uh, uh, we we take them all to to, to heart. I'm going to leave the uh, the last word for you then, Vicky. Uh, yeah, on the on right the three there. tips, anyways. <laughs> well, and I can kind of shorten it by just saying a ditto on, on all of the above. Uh, I think Naomi is is spot on, and I often uh, counsel people that nobody is going to take your career as seriously as you. If there's training you want to do and they're not going to pay for it, then you may need to consider taking it out of your own pocket because. You could may or may not be with that employer a year from now, but it's what skills you can gain so that you can be in a job and a profession and a career that suits you well. And sometimes that means uh, taking on uh, that responsibility and that expense. Uh, very important. Um, uh, also, uh, one thing I'd like to add is that as project managers, it's really important that we help the people around us shine and to grow their expertise. Uh, the more that uh, their expertise lends uh, to the project, uh, the more they shine, the more you do as a leader. I think often, uh, you know, there's a tendency to, to want to try to do it all or, or you know, handle everything or, or be as smart as everybody else in the room. But that's not what the best leaders do. The best leaders say, I want to hire people smarter than me, at least in those topics that I, that I don't have a, a need to know or have a responsibility to know um, to help round out this team to be the best that it can be. Awesome. Um, I would like, to, like very much to, to thank our panel. Uh, for a uh, 
a, a coffee cup style uh, conversation uh, about um, uh, women in, in project management. I see that we could uh, easily extend this to, uh, to, to dinner and dessert and, uh, and, and talk well into the night, but we do need to, to wrap up the, uh, uh, the seminar for those people listening. I just want to uh, reintroduce you to, uh, to the people of the, of the panel. Uh, myself, Martin Chernenkoff, um, my bio is here. And uh, my website is pduotv.com, uh, which is Professional Development Unit of the Day. Um, Naomi Kayeti, uh, this year's uh, Chair for International Project Management. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, she is a, uh, a blogger, um, a speaker, and uh, an author of many, many articles on the, on the website. Um, she's come to us today from uh, Northern California. Uh, well worth um, taking a look at her website and um, her blog articles. Uh, Deanne, thank you very much for, uh, for speaking to us today from, uh, from New Zealand and uh, helping us with that international perspective, with the, uh, the change management perspective. Deanne's um, blog uh, website is, is called Unlike Before, and uh, it focuses, uh, tells you about her philosophy and, and her company. And finally, uh, Vicki James, um, PMP and uh, CVAP, um, her, her website, uh, PPS Solutions, and uh, uh, thank you very much uh, to all of the panel, um, and also a, a thank you to our, to our technical uh, person, uh, Samad Adin, for, for providing the, the recordings today. Uh, Samad's website is the Gorilla Project Manager, G-U-E-R-I-L-L-A. A very worthwhile uh, resource for project managers. Um, thank you very much for your your time today. Uh, if you have questions for any of our panelists, um, the uh, the presentation includes uh, their websites and also their email address. Uh, we're all very open to to your comments, questions, and contacts. Thank you, and uh, that concludes our seminar for the day.